<laughs> it wasn't bad, was it? It wasn't bad. The very first time you've seen yeah, that. Yeah. Mike Trebilco etched himself into Pompey folklore in 1971 with a famous FA Cup goal against Arsenal. With another tie against the Gunners in the same competition on the horizon, we track the former striker down to look back on that iconic moment. Well, Mike, here we are. <laughs> My boyhood hero sitting in front of me. Oh. You've just watched that goal against Arsenal for the yes. first time in 50 years. Yes. It's so great. It's sort of saved by modern technology, isn't it? It's amazing, yeah. So I was talking to my son in Australia this morning and he put the same thing up. He said, I've got that on Facebook, Dad, you know. So it's quite amazing, yeah. Looking at that goal again, is it any different to how it's been played out in your mind all these years? Mm, that's exactly how it played out, yeah. It was because... Um, it was quite wet at, at Portsmouth that night, I think. And when the ball came across, you might not believe this, but when the ball came across, I thought, well, if I slip it along the ground, the fullback's going to come sliding along the line. And I thought, if I hit it straight, the keeper's going to come across. So I thought, well, I'll aim for the post and just put a bit of curl on it and it should go up in the top of the net. Yeah, because David Coleman on Match of the Day, he did do a bit of an injustice because he said it was an open goal, but the defender was coming over quickly. I know he was, yeah, and that was the idea, to get it off the ground so that he couldn't make a slide tackle, yeah. So you were aware that so he was I, coming? Oh, I knew he was coming, I knew he was coming. But it, being a goal scorer, you see all these situations all the time. I mean, like I used to, I, trained with John Milkins and uh, he taught me things and I taught him things yeah yeah and uh, I suppose you know when I was at Plymouth Malcolm Allison was there and he what he taught me was you always got more time than what you think and that stood me in good stead and of course then I used to watch the man himself Jimmy Greaves so I, t I learned most of my goal scoring off him because you had a special love affair with the FA Cup, it seems. Um, let's take you back to 1966, I think it was. Yep. Everton, Sheffield Wednesday, two goals at Wembley, which could have changed your life completely. Well, of course, but I mean, I think in our day, it was like, it was every schoolboy's dream to play in a cup final at Wembley. And, and, uh, and to score the winning goal, of course. But I never did that, I only scored the first two. But it effectively won FA Cup. F uh, well, that's so what they say, so they say. But yeah. you know, football's like it. You go to you go to wherever you go, and you take a team with you. So you're just part of that team, and you, and you do what you are supposed to do. And hopefully, it comes off. Some days it does. Some days it doesn't. There was a guy there that wasn't part of your team. It was Eddie Kavanagh, who. who carousel across the pitch uh, and with policemen running in his way. <laughs> it was, I think that was the best part of the, the, the game and uh, I saw him years later he, at Goodison and he touched me on the shoulder and he said you don't remember me do you? I said no I don't. He said Eddie Cavana. I said oh I'm not going to turn my back on you again that's for sure and it was this good. Yeah. So going back to that Arsenal game the second half that was the least you deserved from that game wasn't it? Yeah we, we I mean, we did play well up there, but in the end, they had too, much, too many big guns for us. And of course, they went on to win the league and the cup, so they weren't a bad side. But you ran them close twice, and they were the, te they were the, the, the invincibles of the time, if you like. Yeah, they were, yeah. And they, like I say, they were a good side, but uh, we gave it our best shot. And, uh, you know, that's what Portsmouth's got to do this time. Yeah, and hopefully you don't have to go for the replay, you know. <laughs> That'd be nice. Do you keep in touch with things at Portsmouth? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, I get calls all the time from up there, or bo new books to sign and all that sort of thing. So that's that's always nice. But it was always a nice time. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you had some notable moments at Fratton Park. Like you scored two hat tricks in the same month. Oh, I think I did too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. I, I I was in Australia for about forty years, and Elton John came. 
Yeah. And he did a concert in Darwin. And uh, I went round the back and he was there and I says, I told him, I said, do you remember me? I said, I scored a hat-trick against Watford. And he said, yes, he said, I do remember you. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I've come to see a superstar. <laughs> so yeah, he remembered too. Did you feel you ever scored enough? You, you were about 10, 10 goals a season at Fratton Park, and that included those two hat-tricks in the same month. Did you ever feel you scored quite enough? I, uh, in my own mind, I feel I should have played more games than what I did. Yeah. Um, it was one of those things that, in, in the, at the time, like teams used to go away from home and not attack so much. So you didn't get your chances away from home that you got at home. Like guys like Georgie Lay and Freddie Smith, they used to go forward, put crosses in all the time. But when you got away from home, they just hit balls into the corner for you to chase. So you couldn't score. And then, of course, you got dropped for the home game, which is where you could have scored more goals. And uh, the guys that were in your place couldn't score goals. So it was a catch-22, I suppose. Yeah. Regards league form, it was quite a mediocre Pompey, form, a Pompey team. So did you actually r raise your game for that Arsenal affair? Oh, I think we, you do. I think you do. And the atmosphere, of course, was fantastic. The crowd, everything building up to it was magic. And uh, it was, yeah, of course, because you're playing against the best and you, you, you want to get a result. In the build-up to that game, it all really changed because the national press started taking note, didn't yeah, they? they did. It must have changed from the draw to the actual game. And we got good money for it too. <laughs> and I think two games were washed off and we were still getting paid for that game, so that was a good time for us. But they had too many guns for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I think we had a squad then of about 17 or 18. Yeah. And if you've got a couple of injuries to your best players, well, I shouldn't say best players, but your more important players, then you struggled. Because they had a lot of guys that could play in different positions for a certain amount of time, but they, they can't do that all the time, you know. We are specialist guys like Ray Pointer. Was, I mean, I remember Ray Pointer, we played at Bristol, and uh, the boss said to the, half, to the midfield players, don't go over the halfway line, you're not allowed over the halfway line. And Ray Pointer got the ball and he, he, he broke away and he kept running and he kept running and he kept running and he hammered it in the top of the net. And half time the boss said, if you'd have missed that, you'd have been in trouble. He said, he said, I wasn't, he said if I'd have missed it, it was going to go in the 12th roll back. He said, oh, there's no way I was going to get caught out. But that's players with initiative and you can't, you can't teach them that, you know. And as a goal scorer, you've got to go in the same positions all the time. If you change, the ball goes where you should have been, then the boss will say, you know, but where were you? you know, and I, if you said, well, I went in there nine times, he said, well, you should have gone in ten times, didn't you? You know, so there was no, and if, if you didn't get the ball, then it looked like maybe you didn't do much. But in actual fact, you did, you know, because of that, and if players changed their mind, whether they put it in the near post or the far post, you couldn't do anything about it. So what category would you put yourself in there as a player? Ordinary. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was just an ordinary player. I mean, I just wanted to play football, that's all. Ever since I was a boy, I just wanted to play. You know, what people thought of you was... didn't mean anything to me. <coughs> you, you, signed, you signed for Portsmouth for £40,000, which in those days was quite a sum. Did that put, any, put you under any pressure? No, it didn't, because, like I say, I just wanted to play football. And it wouldn't have mattered if I... Well, I mean, I ended up with Weymouth in the part in the in the part-timers and I loved it there too so it didn't matter to me I mean the the biggest thing for me was to sign as a professional footballer and once that was out of the way well everything was everything was fine on the theme of FA Cup goals you also scored one against Fulham in front of about 45,000 fans again an FA Cup goal oh. <laughs> got a better memory than me. It must be old timers for I, I me. I look at my books. <laughs> yeah, you roll it down, yeah. Well, I mean, it was just, you score goals, you know, in training you score goals. Uh, it was, it's nothing better than to nutmeg your own centre half in training and put the ball in the net and that sort of thing. So it just became natural. I, I was um, I was a natural goal scorer. And then when I saw Jimmy Greaves play, I said, that's the way to score goals. And he was the, he was the master. Is it about making your mind up before you actually get to goal? Yeah, yep. You, once you're there, you've got to slow down. 
Yeah. The important part is getting there. And once you get there, you've got to s just slow down a little bit, you know. That's why people slice balls over the bar and miss kick and all that. You have to just slow down. <coughs> Excuse me. The Arsenal goal again. Let's go back there. You became iconic on Match of the Day after that for quite a time because of the, the celebration, which was a somersault. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, now, was that quite instant as well? Yeah, it was, that's, yeah, I think it was about the first time it happened in English Was it football. a somersault, somersault of joy? Yes, absolutely. And Albert McCann was in the stand at the time and, and he went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew, you know, he knew it was going to be a goal. And that's, and that's the thing about the players that I played with. You know, they used to say, if Trebsey gets a chance, it'll be a goal, you know. Uh, I remember we played, a, a, I forget the team, but Richard Reynolds robbed the keeper of the ball and he was lying on his back and he kicked it at the line and the fullback, it hit the fullback on the line and I followed up and it came back to me and I just rolled it in the corner and Albert said, did you have two chances at that Trebs? I said, no, just the one. He said, I thought you wouldn't have needed two. So they did expect me to score, yeah. Which was nice. Yeah, yeah. Did you always expect to score? Yes. Yes. Yeah, when you went in there, it was going to come to you, and that's how you think. As a striker, whatever happens, you know, if, if you think a defender is going to clear it, you stop, he miskicks it, and the chance is gone. So you anticipate he's going to miskick it. He's going to miss it. That's what, as, you, as, a, as a striker, you go into a situation, the defender's always going to miss it. Did you ever think that people would be hunting you down? 50 years later and there would be a big screen on at Fratton Park which played your goal before every home game? Never. Never in a million years. To me it was gone. It was gone, you know. But it's lovely, I must admit, it's lovely. But um, like I say, I used to score goals in schools and, and, and playgrounds and it, it was a joy, you know. And, it was, and the, the best goals were like just a little tapping. Yeah. You know, the keeper made the save and he was on the floor and it came to you. It was lovely. There's nobody there, just put it in the net, you know. And, that's, and some of the others, of course, you have to hammer. But uh, the secret is to get it over the line. That's the secret. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you did in that game against Arsenal, but have you ever thought about if it had been in reverse and you'd have missed it, or McClintock, whoever, had got it off the line? No way! They're going to miss from there. If I'd have missed from there, they'd have, the players would never have spoken to me again. It was just accepted that if Trebsey gets a clear shot, it'll be a goal. And nine times out of ten, yeah, I was pretty good at that. But, like I say, Jimmy Greaves was the man who taught me that. Without speaking to them, I spoke to him once. He shook my hand once, and I never washed it for a week. Jimmy Greaves shook my hand, you know, that's, that's, that's big. And uh, I saw him play at Southampton. And he was playing for Tottenham, I think, and the ball came to the far post. And Jimmy Greaves was standing on his own, on his favourite left foot. And he pulled his foot back as if to hammer it back across the goal. And I think Eric Martin was the goalkeeper there at Southampton at that time. And as he pulled his foot back, Eric Martin started to go across the goal. And Jimmy Greaves just dropped it in the near post. And Eric Martin was on one knee going, what was that? And I said, he's the master. Yeah. You played in another big cup match at Old Trafford against Manchester United when the likes of Charlton and Best and that's the days when clubs paid their strongest team in every competition. Yeah, that was a good sell. I don't think I got a kick that night. Again, you raised the game though, 1-0 in the end. Yeah, it was, and it, but I mean, I think George Best was... The thing about George Best was that when he got the ball, everybody watched him play. Even the defence, you know, they thought, what's he going to do? You know, we we'll stand and watch, and they never tackled him at all. I mean, today he'd be worth, well, you couldn't buy him, you know. But. You say you scored goals. Was that coached into you, or was it natural? It was natural. It came to me as a boy, you know, there's it was just some love I felt with goal, with goal scoring. You know. Nothing else, nothing, the rest didn't matter. You know, you just, if you, you know, if your team, if your team wanted had to be an own goal by the opposition if you weren't playing, you know, you had to be in there playing and, uh, and you see people miss goals and you go, oh, I'd have scored that, you know, but you're sitting in the stands where you don't score it, yeah. Do you feel now that, that talent is coached out of people almost? Absolutely. Formations and tactics? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, nobody can tackle anymore. 
I mean, that's why so many guys get sent off because they don't know how to tackle. I mean, in our day, we used to go around the back of the the, the, the grandstand and, and stand up and, and block tackle and be shown how to do it. But they don't do that. I mean, today, I mean, in, in, or in Leeds days, if you were going to shoot, in, if you got in Leeds box and you were going to shoot, there was at least six pairs of legs coming your way to say, no, you're not going to. But now they just shoot and they let them shoot. And it's, it was never like that. But the goal scorers today, I feel sorry for. Because there's nobody putting through balls through quickly or anything like that. You know, they just play a square and backwards. And no, I think I'd be a nightmare today to be a goalkeeper. To be a goal scorer, sorry. You bid farewell to Portsmouth after four seasons and you end up at Torquay United. Yep. And lo and behold, what did you do? One of the first games, you play Portsmouth in the League Cup and Trebilco from the penalty spot. Another cup goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I must have had a love with the cup, I suppose. But it was. You know, it's just been right place, right time, and everybody doing their job as well. You know, like I say, sometimes you can make a lot of runs into where you're supposed to be and the ball could go somewhere else. And then people say, well, he didn't do much today, you know. But you do what you, you normally do, and you can't change in, in midstream, you know. Were you sad when it finally came to an end at Portsmouth? Oh, yeah, I was, I was. And I... I, I <sighs> You know, but if the club doesn't want you, then you've got to move on, you know. It's no good being there and being unhappy, you know, so... Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with, with Ronnie Tyndall, actually. Yeah, Ronnie wasn't the... Uh, he was a bit of a yes man, I think. Sorry to say that, for about another footballer, but... He, uh, he, he did what the, uh, the, the directors wanted him to do, rather than what was good for the, for the, for the team. And I think Owen Han uh, showed that in his in his story as well. You also played under George Smith, who was a bit of an army general. George Smith was a nightmare. <laughs> George Smith was a nightmare. Um, I remember when I first played. I think we played Rotherham, and I was still at, I was still living in Liverpool at the time. And uh, I thought. I'd done quite well. Then I got back on the train and went back to Liverpool and George Smith got on the train, on the bus to come back to, to um, Georgie Lay was telling me this, so it's not a lie. We were they got back to come back on the bus or whatever it was and George Smith turned around to the players and said, oh, we'll have to teach him to do a bit more running, you know, and that was his attitude, you know. And I said to him one day, I said, look, I said, at Everton, no, I never chased fullbacks back. I mean, so it's that's somebody else's job. And he said, well, you're not at Everton now, son, are you? And that was the end of the story, so... So he thought you were lazy? He thought I was lazy, yeah. Uh, another lazy goal scorer, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I get... I, I, I talk about this quite often. And, and, and players stand at the back, you know, and they, they call you names, and they call you lazy, and they call you everything else. But when you've just chased their ball into the corner flag, and you've run about 40 metres to get it, you don't see them coming up from the back behind you and saying, I'm here to help you. But they get into trouble and they're saying, get back here and help us. You know, they've got eight back there already. What do they want another two for? And then they kick it up there and they say, what are you, where, were you, where were you, you know? So it was just, George was a sergeant major. You know, if you didn't do it his way, then it wasn't, it wasn't going to be done. So you, you just had to do what you did. So in truth, you didn't get on with either of your Pompey managers. Well, I think there must have been something wrong with me. <laughs> Which might explain why you didn't get enough game time. Well, it's, it's strange because uh, the, the Arsenal game in particular, and uh, when we scored late on, and Ronnie Tindall said to me, see, that's why I keep you on to the end, you know. And then a few weeks later, he took me off with 20 minutes to go, you know, I'm thinking, well, this doesn't just sort of gel, really, you know. No. You're looking for your... I mean, I remember uh, Gary, Lineker be, Gary Lineker being taken off by... Um, I forget the manager's name now. With England, with 20 minutes to go, and put somebody on that wasn't, wasn't, a, wasn't a striker. And I thought, well, how can you do that? Take the best goal scorer off you've got and put on somebody that's not as good. If you've got somebody good, put him on with that striker, you know. But that's, that's managers' jobs. Was it difficult coming down from those two Arsenal games and going back to almost the bread and butter of league football? Yeah. Oh, it 
was, yeah. And we took a while to get over that Arsenal game. I remember Harry Harris, one of the games I think we got washed off, and we were having a drink in the, in the Arsenal club there, yeah. and Harry Harris had this big cigar, you know, and I lit up a one pound note and gave him a light on the cigar with a one pound note, because you know, yeah. we were going good money in then. So. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was good times. Yeah, yeah it was. It, it was when Arsenal had under soil heated, and, and yeah. that game was called off very, very late. Wasn't it, it was, yeah, yeah. But it was good, yeah. And you still retained an interest in the FA Cup for a week after that. And um, you know, it, let's say it was coming down because I think the game after you lost four one at home to Carlisle. I can't remember that. <laughs> but this is what, you know, you were a mediocre football team, yeah. regards league football. Yeah, we were. We were, yeah. We just, like I say, we just never had enough top players. Uh -huh. Some got injured and the other players were just, like, lay-by sort of players, you know. Yeah. Will you be watching the game? Yeah, I'll be watching. I'll be watching the game. You know, and I, you know my, my advice would be, to go at Arsenal now because they're in a transition sort of period and they're, they're, it's one of those things they could click on the night or they could fold yeah. so it's the best time to get at them straight away not just go and play safe they're not the Arsenal they were back when you played no 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 uh, and I think Portsmouth have got some very good players now you know did the manager then make special provisions to, to mark certain players or was it just you you playing your own game no you just played your own game i mean you couldn't mark the, the guys that they had playing for arsenal you, we didn't have enough players to mark them i remember george lay committed an offense which in modern game would have been sent off when he when he gave away the penalty but what a beautiful save it was yeah well i think the referee, referees had a bit more common sense in those days and he, he knew what the situation was and he gave the penalty or whatever and uh, that was... But I think it's automatic sending off now, but you know, in those yeah. days you did have a bit of leeway. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the referees were very good in our day, but we were very good too. We never really badgered referees, you know. They pointed one way or the other and that was it. And you lost the replay exactly the same on the penalty. Yeah. You know who that fault that was, don't you? Was it Owen Hands? Yes. <laughs> Tell him when you see him. But I mean, it, it, they were too good for us. In the end, they were too good for us. And, uh, you often wondered, because on that day, I think it was John Radford, appeared to be running towards the corner flag when he brought him down. Well, I thought that, I, I thought the tackle was unnecessary. I, I think Freddie Smith could have come in from the right fullback position and got there. And I think Freddie thought that too. Yeah. And, but excitement of the game. And, Will that game always live on in your memory? Of course, yeah. I, I mean, the, the replay was brilliant. I mean, I laid the ball off to Georgie Lay and he smashed it in. That was that was brilliant, you know. So we had a, we had some good times, yeah. Will it be up there with the cup final for Everton? No. Yeah. Sorry, no, can't. No, that was something. That was, like I say, that was a schoolboy's dream. But I mean, even before. Uh, when we played Manchester United in the semi-final, I mean, so we didn't get there by be by beating uh, ordinary teams. You know, we beat Manchester United in the semi-final, and you know, and I thought, wow, I'm going to Wembley. You know, and the next week I got dropped. You know, I thought, oh. <laughs> so I said to the other players, what do we do now then? They said, oh, we get on a train, we go around to Wembley, and what's the cup final, you know, I thought, oh, great, you know, I'm going down to Wembley. I've only been here six months and I'm going to watch a cup final live, you know. And uh, we got down there and we had, were having lunch on the Friday. And the trainer says, uh, Trebs, he said, <coughs> uh, the, uh, the boss wants to see you. And uh, I couldn't understand why I, I, he wanted to see me because the team was, was done and dusted, you know. And... Uh, I got in there in the room and Fred Pickering was there as well and I couldn't understand why Fred was there because you know he was going to play that's for sure England centre forward boy from Cornwall no no contest and the boss said look he said at a time like this he said decisions have to be made and he said I'm the one that's got to make them and he said uh, Fred I'm leaving you out and putting Mike in and that was the Friday before the cup final. So it is kind of fate, isn't it? Yeah, so that was how it worked out. And of course, I never got a kick. You know, we were 2-0 down, I never got a kick. And uh, we looked, you know, it was my turn to kick off. And I looked up at the other end and Ron Springett was in goals. And 
I looked at the scoreboard and it said uh, Sheffield Wednesday 2 Everton nil. And I looked around the 100,000 crowd and I thought, oh, sugar, you know. And then I knew that like 40,000 Evertonians would be saying, the manager's got it wrong, he picked the wrong guy, you know. So I just looked up at the sky and I said, why me, Lord, why me? And then four minutes later he said, that's why you, Trips. <laughs> it's Roy of the Rovers. And as I can remember, they were typical poachers, goals are good. Oh, yeah, I was, they were two good goals. They were really good goals. Well, poaching goals can be good goals. But what you, you know, what people don't understand is it, it's always by a defender's mistake. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and tell it you, and you'll probably get it on the YouTube or whatever you do. But the first goal, when I came away from the goal to pretend I wanted the ball, the guy that was marking me didn't come with me. And he went back to mark Derek Temple, who was the furthest man up. And he got in the way of his mate. And when I went back in, I was on my own. So people would go, how come he's on his own like that? But it's because the defender made a mistake. He should have come with me and he didn't. And then the second goal, which you'll watch, we put Brian LeBone up. The centre half always goes up when we're in trouble for crosses. Cross came to the fire post, headed straight back across, and I was running in there and then buried it. But Brian LeBone didn't head it. Their centre half headed it. And nobody knows that. Their centre half headed it straight back across the goal, which is a no-no. You don't you don't head back across your own goal. Well, I think that Arsenal game, I swear a defender, an Arsenal defender, got the last touch to it before it came to you. Uh, I think he might have done, but I was, I was concentrating on what I was going to do as it, came, as it came past, yeah. So there you are, as people make mistakes and that's what goals, goals are all about. And you have to be there, of course, and you've got, you have to think they're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Can you have too much time to think? Because <laughs> you said yeah. the ball took some time to get across to you at Bratton Park. Yeah, you can have that, you can hit it before it gets there. That's a mistake, yeah. But like I say, Malcolm Allison always said, you've got more time than what you think. And like I was on my own for about a couple of yards or so, and that's got to be enough. You, you need enough time to pull your foot back. Once you pull the foot back, that's the end, yeah. Listen, get yourself on YouTube and watch that goal whenever you feel down. All right, I will, yeah. Still makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up all these years later. So. It was a brilliant night. It was a brilliant night. I mean, it's... I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky, you know, to, to play and scored goals like I scored because that's what I always loved doing, you know. I, I, I was talking to a guy the other day, went to somebody's funeral, which I'm doing these days, and uh, he said, oh, he said, I remember you. He said, we went to school together. I said, oh, yeah. He said, we've got a record, he said. He said, you beat us 6-1. And he said, I scored the one. He said, and you scored the six. So that was when we were 11. So this, the memories still come back to those, but goal scoring was my life, you know, and uh, hopefully it, it'll carry on. I'm trying to get a walking team together maybe one day and uh, play again, yeah.